Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, I said praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, aren't you glad he woke you up this morning? Let's all stand this morning. Why don't we all stand, lift our hands unto the Lord and invite him into our lives today. Let's ask God to forgive us right now of anything that we've done. Father, we're asking right now, God, that you forgive us as we stand before you, humbly before you, God. We're asking this morning to create us a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within us, God. Lord, we know that forgiveness is in this place. We know that there's deliverance in this place, God. Lord, I've come today for a breakthrough today, God. And I know there's breakthroughs all through this place today, God. Come on, church, can you clap your hands? Can you praise him right now? Because he inhabits the praise of his people. Oh, I think we can do better than that. We're apostolic. Come on, let's let the devil know that we've come here and we worship one God. And his name is Jesus. Come on, clap your hands one more time. Never shout the voice of triumph.
Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing that one more time. There is nothing greater than you can teach your children is that the King of Kings and Lord of Lords knows them by name. Amen. What a beautiful thing it is to hear them singing. You know my name. You know my name. Oh, how you walk with me, Jesus. Oh, how you talk with me, Jesus. Oh, how you tell me that I am your own. What a beautiful message this is this morning that these children know they're never alone, that Jesus walks with them. He talks with them. He is with them daily. He's faithful. Nobody loves me like you. And as we sing it one more time, I want you to pray for these children because they got a long road ahead of them. We've seen many days ahead of us and we've seen many days behind us. We know all these days that are coming and we want to pray that God would just be with them and help them in their journey. In the name of Jesus, Lord, be with these children that they walk with you and they talk with you and they know you personally and they can make it. They can do it. Amen. Be like you love me, Jesus. I stay. Thank you, Jesus. 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 You're worthy, God. You're wonderful, Jesus. Oh, how the heavens rejoice this morning. I feel the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing more beautiful. Nothing more beautiful. Thank you, Jesus.
searching hearts i
I just want to tell our Sunday school she had, they did an awesome job. It takes a lot of nerve to get up here in front of these people and sing. And Brother Wells, I think Easton might be gunning for your job. So he did a he did an amazing little job there at the end. If our ushers get ready, we're going to take up our tithing and offering. If you will repeat this with me, let's declare this together. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithes today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God. Perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessings. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will see of the good.
Amen. How many of you are thankful for the goodness of God this morning? Amen. It just helps me put in perspective how good God is. Amen. He has never failed me, Brother Bruce. <laughs> Brother Bruce is telling me that he's been struggling and he needs a breakthrough. You know, God is faithful. Amen. And no matter what circumstance in life, you know, God is, he's still there. He don't ever leave us alone. He don't leave us by ourselves. Amen. But he's always there. I mean, I'm thankful for him this morning. Uh, I want to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, I want to remember Sister Willie. I mean, she's with us this morning. Uh, Dwayne Henry, they're taking Hunter Henry to the ER this morning. I'm not sure the details, so we'll just pray for him. Eddie Fair and Kathy Fair, Teresa Kennedy, Marilyn Borden. She's here. She's. Have you uh, had you? You got your schedule, right? I was in November. November 17th, she goes to see a, a Nero surgeon. Uh, let's just pray that the Lord will be just great if He just healed you before you went. Amen. Amen. Catherine Hudson's family, um, Ukraine, and our missionaries, our prodigals, this city. Amen. How many believe that God can do it today? Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we love you. We're thankful for what we feel in this house already. God, you are good to us. Lord, you have been faithful, God. There's never a day that goes by that we're not on your mind, God, and you don't want to, that you always look out for our best intentions, Lord. Lord, we ask that you move upon every need, every sickness, God. Lord, every, every name that was mentioned, Lord, every situation, God, every circumstance, Lord, you're able to perform it today. God, we believe in your power. Lord, we believe in, in your Holy Ghost power today. We believe in your healings, your deliverance, your miracles today, God. You're able to perform it. And Lord, we just ask that you be mighty in this house today. Lord, have free reign and free will in this church today. Lord, allow your anointing to flow through this house. Lord, touch lives and hearts today. Anoint the word as it comes forth today. Lord, we give you the praise and the honor. And everyone say in Jesus' name, can we exalt the name of Jesus in this place? Can we lift him up this morning? Day. 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give us a teacher. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I know the Lord is moving in this house and there's a hindrance that's happening, but God is wanting to do something in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. I'm just going to use the piano only right now and I want all the musicians and singers to just begin to pray. Foundation are shaking and every curse is breaking strongholds are falling and greater things are coming foundations are shaking and every curse is breaking strongholds are falling and greater things are coming Greater things are coming. Greater things are coming. Greater things are coming. Greater things are coming. Greater things are coming.
Come on, somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, someone get a breakthrough. Don't pay attention to what's going on in here. Let's come on right now. Let's get a breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ, brother. Come on, all three from the top to the back, front to the back, every hand lifted, every eye looking towards Jesus Christ. Come on, youth, you've got fervency in you. You've got power in your prayers. Lift up your voice. Just go from where you're at into where the presence of God is. I know there's got to be some elders that have a lifetime of prayer. I know there's got to be some young people who know that God has changed their life. I know there's got to be a hyphen group who are ready for purpose and plans. I know there's got to be a group. I know there's got to be an elect people. Come on. Come on, if you don't know what to do, it's pretty simple. You just raise your hands and talk to the Lord. Just talk to the Lord from where you're at. You don't have, you don't know, you don't have to have words to say, but just be there in His presence. It's okay to be silent in the Lord. Foundations are shaking. Every curse is breaking. That's what the presence of God is. Is when every foundation shakes. When the concrete comes down. When every foundation is broken. And God lays the foundation. Oh, but you are built on the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in in whom you are saved. Through the blood of the Lamb.
ever been filled with the Holy Ghost? If you ever ran to an altar, come on somebody, if you've ever ran to an altar, (laughs) if your sins have ever been forgiven, somebody, hallelujah, if your family's ever been saved by the power of God, (laughs) if your life has been turned around to face the face of Jesus Christ, why don't you clap your hands? If you've ever seen the glory of God be manifest, why don't you clap your hands? Oh, hallelujah. If you ever stepped into a place of darkness and God was the light, why don't you clap your hands? If you've ever been in a place where there was no hope and God was your hope, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to hasten to just get into the message. I'm going to stay in the presence of God. As long as it's last, I'm going I'm to flow in this vein. Come on, some of you he's not done with. Some of you he's still working on you right now. And I'm not going to make you go to your seat. I'm not going to make you be quiet. I'm just going to let you continue in that for just a moment. Amen. Of the goodness of God, 
I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God Of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after Running after me Your goodness is running after Running after me My life laid down I surrender Take just a moment and just listen for the voice of God. With every eye closed, every head bowed, I would like you to listen for God's voice. Let the gifts of the Spirit move. Let the Holy Ghost move in this place. I'm asking you all to be very sensitive right now to what God might speak to you or might speak to us. Why don't you lift your hands to heaven one last time in submission and admiration of Jesus and thank him for his goodness. Thank him for all the times in which you are filled with darkness, but he came through. Thank him in which you, when you are in a place of darkness and despair, but God make a, made a way. In your own words, do that. Thank Him for all the times He's spoken to you. All the times He's made you to feel His presence. All those times, day after day, week after week, month after month, where the goodness of God followed you where where the goodness of God was right behind you the Bible says that goodness and mercy shall follow me all my days hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may return to your seats. <coughs> Amen. It's always good to be in Dexter. Good to come down every now and again and get to spend time with my family and the church family. And I want to thank each and every one of you for um, bearing with me as I, as I pursued a call to preach these last um, three years or so, two, two years. And how, I don't know where Pastor is, but thank you, Pastor, for having faith in me to think that I might do well. And I want to thank everybody who's taught me a Bible study. I want to thank Dorothy. I was reading through my journals the other day because I have about two or three journals I've filled up since I've been in church. And I began reading some of those, and I, and I saw, went to Dorothy's house today, had a Bible study. I feel, I feel really good about God. And I want to thank each and every one of you. Each one of you have prayed for me. Brother Jamie, thank you so much. I wish some of you could have seen the rebukes that he's given me when I was in youth group. I think some of you youth boys would feel a lot better about yourself if you knew that I got rebuked where well, brother Jamie called me and I me, Bryce too we were at Sonic and brother Jamie calls me and says where are you at I said I'm at Sonic you want something <laughs> and then brother Jamie says I need you to come to my house right now as soon as you get done with Sonic I'm like okay and here me and Bryce are like what in the world did we do and then I come to find out that I did something stupid and ignorant and he's helped me and I'm glad we have people like that because if I would have kept doing what I was doing, I, we need voices like that in our life. And I thank you, Brother Jamie and Sister Halls, for everything that you've done. And Rob, for letting me eat all your pizzas when, when, before Brother Jamie was in our youth leader. I probably could eat two to three pizza pies. Throw them down. Oh, but the Lord is faithful. And whenever we walk with God, it's like going on a river. You never step in the same river twice, but you're always changing. And everything is always changing. And that's, that's the life we ought to live, where we're continually getting better. Hallelujah. The Lord is faithful. Oh my gosh. I wish right now I could show my high school pictures of what I used to look like in high school. And I'm so, You all can be seated for just a moment where I tell, for, when I tell stories. And we'll stand again for the Word of God, for the reading of the Word of God. But whenever I, whenever I was a freshman in high school... I wish somebody would have told me. I wish somebody, Bryce, I wish you would have told me that I did not look good. I wish you would have told me. I wish somebody would have told me something. If I, I wish. Uh, so here's what I looked like. My freshman year of high school, I had a bowl cut. <laughs> this is before Dorothy cut my hair, so... But I had this haircut, Brother Rob, and it was a bowl cut, and I had these sideburns. No joke, I'm not joking with you. Sideburns that went like this, all the way down here. And they weren't even like beardly, like Brother Hall's, but they were more of um, peach fuzz. I don't even know. <laughs> oh, God. And then my sophomore year of high school, I gained, I gained much weight. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had this neck beard, this monster of a neck beard that, gosh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't you know, you're supposed to trim your beard up. This thing was wild. I looked like Chewbacca, Brother Burns. <laughs> and then I thought, maybe I, should, maybe I should skim down on the beard. It seems I just can't really take care of it right. I'm, maybe I'm just not supposed to have it. And so my junior year of high school, actually in the summer, right before my junior year of high school, I decided, oh, here we go. Here we go. This is my junior year of high school right here. If you uh, just pass it down. This is an interactive <laughs> class. Make sure I get it back by the end. But it looks like I had a goatee. But that's just like this. But if you would have saw 3D, not the picture, it wasn't a goatee. It was a It was a neck beard that was just in the middle. And that wasn't trimmed either. <laughs> But the Lord's delivered me. And I'm pleased. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord has moved on me. And 
I just don't like beards anymore. I'm sorry. I just don't. <laughs> Maybe I've got some trauma or something. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, if you would stand, I'd like to tur- turn to the gospel of Ma- according to Matthew, chapter 6, starting at verse 5. Um, through verse 14, and then we'll be going to the... Um, um, to, to James. Amen. This is Jesus on the, uh, the, the Sermon of the, on the Mount. Red letters everywhere. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. And assuredly, I say to you that they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Then lastly, I'd like to read a little scripture from the end um, of of the book of James. Chapter 5 and beginning at verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let them sing songs. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call for you to the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses one to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And he goes on to say, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. I like to speak to you from this subject. In this manner, therefore, pray. If you put your Bibles down, and one last time, if we would lift up our hands. And let the Lord speak to us today. And I would that everybody, if you'd listen for me for just a moment, if everybody would repent. I would that everybody would, I I pray that you would ask God from, from a sincere heart to cleanse your heart and to cleanse your mind. So let's pray. Father, we come before you. We come into this holy place, this dwelling place. And Lord, we know that we are not, God, we are not worthy to be here. And we are not worthy to step into your presence or for you to come and meet us. But God, only through your grace and your mercy are we able to do so. Only through the death that you bore on Calvary's cross are we able to do so. So Lord, forgive me of any thought that might uh, take itself above the knowledge of Christ. God, I take it captive right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray here today for this church and for these sweet, precious people that the soil that the Word of God has planted on would be a fertile, good ground in which the Word of God can grow. Lord, I pray for them and help me to teach and preach about prayer here today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Amen. In this manner, therefore, pray. Prayer is important. Prayer is vital. Prayer is something in which the believer has to practice daily. The scripture tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, the Bible says to pray. Without ceasing. In Ephesians 6.18 the Bible says. Praying always. With all prayer and supplication. In the spirit. Being watchful to this end. With all perseverance. And supplication for all saints. Luke 18.1 says. Then Jesus spoke a parable to them. That men always ought to pray. And not to lose heart. Romans 12.12 says. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Colossians 4.2 says, 
Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Prayer is important, my friends. Prayer is vital. Hello? Has anybody ever been to a prayer meeting to where the Lord moved on you and the presence of God washed over you? Has anybody ever been there? Has anybody ever been to a place where an old, an old elder or a saint that, that's a lot older than you prayed over you and the Lord touched you in a mighty way? Hello? Am I speaking to anybody here today? Has the Lord ever met you with His grace and mercy whenever you called on His name? Hallelujah. Has the Lord ever done that for you? Has the Lord ever met you whenever you were in a dark place? But yet you called on the name of the Lord and He talked to you. Have you ever been there? Have you ever ran to an altar where the preacher preached and you prayed to God and the Lord talked to you? My friend, prayer is important. (coughs) In our scripture in James, the Bible said that Elijah was a man of like nature. That Elijah was a man just like you and I. He was a man who had an appetite. He was a man who probably had a diet. He was a man who had to dress himself each morning. He was a man who had to do things that men do. Elijah was just like you and I. And just because he was a character in the Bible doesn't mean that we're that much different from him. Elijah was a man with like nature. He had same, some of the same desires as we do. He had some of the same thoughts as we do. He had some of the uh, same things going through his mind and tormenting him. Elijah faced depression. Elijah faced things that, in which we face. I want to tell your friend here today that do not be alone in your circumstance. For there are people around you, there are people in the Bible sent to encourage you, sent to tell you that don't be alone, but trust in God. For Elijah was a man of a like nature as us. And he struggled, and he faced things, but he prayed earnestly. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he faced things similar as we do. The Lord Jesus was a man who came just like us. And there can be nothing more difficult to talk about, to preach about, to teach about, than that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord from heaven, the Lord of glory, Jehovah, Adonai, Elohim, came down in flesh. And He died for our sins. That's tough to teach. How do you teach the father-son relationship? It's a tough, it's a, it's a t- it's a tough situation. But we know that the Lord, our God, is one. We know that we might not have the answers to all the mysteries of the Bible. But we know for a fact that our Lord is one. As pastor was preaching, oh, hallelujah, something something began to rise in me. And I said, I'm not going to forsake this truth, Lord. God, I'm not going far. God, I'm not going anywhere but here in the Bible. Where the Bible clearly states, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord our God is one. Hallelujah. Anybody know that today that the Lord our God is one? That the God we serve isn't three gods? Let me just mathematically prove the Trinity wrong. You ever tried to, to, um, how can I say this? Um, Three. You have three. You can't perfectly divide that. The Trinity is not whole. Even if it tries to be. It can't be. It can't be. And how do you explain that the Father of Jesus, it says the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary, but yet it's the Father? It seems like the Father and the Holy Spirit are one. And Jesus had that Spirit in Him. Therefore, He was one with our Father and the Holy Ghost. Therefore, our Lord is one. Amen. The next thing we read in the Bible about Elijah was that he was righteous. The, the Bible says that, that the fervent, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. It's the prayer of a righteous man that avails much. There is a right, a right way to pray. And in, in the scripture that I read to you in Matthew, 
a little bit before the text that I read at the beginning of Matthew chapter 6. It's the Sermon on the Mount. And, and before Jesus teaches us how to pray, He tells us how not to pray. And He tells us things we ought not to do when we give char- charitable deeds and when we give alms. He said, don't sound the trumpet whenever you give char- charitable deeds. Whenever you give alms and whenever you, also whenever you give to the poor, don't, don't let everybody know. For your Father sees in secret and He will reward you publicly. Don't let all the attention be on you. Don't, don't, let it, don't let it dwell on you. It's not yours. All the glory is God's. Don't say, look at me, aren't I the best? Aren't I the best man? But you give all the glory to God and all that. Our Father knows all. And as James the Apostle says, there is no variation nor shadow of turning. Which basically means in our God is consistency. In our God, you cannot shine a, uh, shine a light on Him and, and He'll cast a shadow. Our Lord is a consistent, full of light God. You can't hide Him. You can't try hiding from Him. Our Lord knows what you do in secret. And our Lord knows what you do in public. He knows what you do but when you close the door. He knows what you do whenever you get another person and you go do something in secret. He knows all immor- immorality. He knows everything that's happening in your life that is sinful. He knows everything. And you can't hide from that. Our Lord knows everything. Do you understand that? There are things you don't know that He knows. And things you may never know, but He knows. Let me tell you something, friend, that you cannot hide from God. You can try your hardest. You can shut the door, lock the door, turn the lights off, put a blanket over you. But God is still there. Same thing in reverse. You can go in public and God is still there. God is here. God is here. And when I go into that room, God is there too. When I go in that room, God is there too. When I walk downstairs to the youth room, God is there too. When I walk down to the fellowship hall, God is there too. He's everywhere. And you can't hide anything from Him. You may think that you're being, you're being smart, doing something secretive, doing something behind closed doors. But let me tell you something, friend. God knows it all. You may think that... You may think you can hide from God. Or that there's some sort of cover you can come over and just go into a a dark crawling space and just hide in a corner but I'm telling you friend in our God there is no variation nor shadow of turning our God sees all he knows every thought every intention every motive everything our God knows all amen if you believe that why don't you clap your hands our God knows all you can't hide from him The Bible says, in considering prayer in Proverbs, that the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is His delight. He says the prayer of the upright is His delight. Clear the stage and set the sound and lights ablaze. If that's the measure you must take to crush the idols. Jerk the pews and all the decorations too until the congregation's few that have revival. Tell your friends that this is where the party ends until you're broken for your sins. You can't be social. Then seek the Lord and wait for what He has in store and know that great is your reward. So just be hopeful. Because you can sing all you want to and you can still get it wrong. You can sing, you can pray all you want to and still get it wrong because prayer and worship is more than a song. Take a break from all the plans that you have made and sit at home and wait for God to whisper. Beg Him please to open up His mouth and speak and pray upon your knees until they blister. Shine the light on every corner of your life until the pride and lust and lies are in the open. Then read the Word of God and put to test the things you've heard until your heart and soul are stirred and rocked and broken. You can sing all you want to and still get it wrong because worship, prayer, consecration is more than a song or a service. One thing our Lord says to not do in prayer is not to use vain repetitions like the heathen do. He says that they think that they will be heard for the many wars, but they already have the reward. That's what the Bible says. That when you're praying and and you're praying as if you want other people to hear you, you already have your reward because your reward is just an affirmation of another person. And not in the delight of the Lord. That's why the Lord says, 
the, the upright prayer, the upright man who prays, it's his delight. Not the delight of those who use vain repetitions. They think that if you repeat a set list of words or, or, just, or, or just a program that, that, that they will be heard. However, the only people hearing them are men. You can't just repeat a liturgy or a traditional amount of words. Prayer has to come straight from the heart. Let me tell you something. Prayer has to come straight from the heart. Amen. Prayer is straight from the heart. Whenever you lift up your voice and pray, you're not doing it just because everybody else is doing it. And when you worship and you come to the front, you're not doing it just because everybody else is doing it. But you're doing it because it's out of your heart. It's out of the abundance of your heart. You're not doing it for anybody else. You're not doing it for any other reward. You're not doing it for a secret motive or or intention, but you're doing it because the Lord is here. You're doing it for God. Everything that you do, do so in the name of the Lord. Do so in the name of the Lord. And when you pray, you're not praying just to, just to do a prayer, just to be seen at the altar, just because that's what everybody else does. You're doing it because the Lord is here. And because it says out of your abundance of your heart, you're not doing it for any other reason. Hello? Can I go this far? You're not coming to church for any other reason, but out of your heart. You're not coming to church just to please somebody, but you're doing it out of your heart. Everything you do, do so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through our Lord. You're doing it all in the name of the Lord. Same thing with playing any instrument or singing any song or preaching any message. You're not doing it just to fulfill a quota, just because pastor asked me to, just because of whatever. But no, you're doing it out of your heart. It's the heart that matters. You can change whatever behavior you want to. You can change all of that. You can say, don't go here, don't do this, and then your heart will be right. But my friend, you must put your eyes towards Jesus. And then your heart will fix. Then your heart will fix. Just Don't just change the behavior, but change your heart. Change your heart. Change your prayer life. Do things differently. Because I've seen people who've prayed for an hour and, and nothing happens. But I've seen people who pray for five minutes out of the abundance of their heart. And God meets them. And I see it happen. You can get so strict. You can say, well, I have to, I have to wake up at 2 a.m. every morning. Or, I, or I, I pray these set times of the day. But a heart that loves God, it doesn't matter what time it is. It doesn't matter what day it is. They will continue in prayer. Anytime. Anywhere. They will continue in prayer steadfastly. Amen. We see this in the apostles. When the apostles prayed, the Bible says that John and Peter, at the hour of prayer, they went into the temple and they prayed and they reached God. All throughout the books of book of Acts, Acts, I believe it's 6-9, it says that they continued in, in prayer steadfastly, awaiting the Lord, awaiting for the earnest hope. The Bible says that when they continued in prayer, they did it steadfastly unto the Lord. Not out of their own vision. Not out of their own self. Now I want to tell you something. I'm not going to get up here and act like some days in prayer aren't hard. Because they are hard. Josh Herring said it like this, that some days you have fire days, some days you have stone days. What does that mean? When you build an altar, some days you're just laying stones. Building a foundation. Other days the fire of God comes down on the altar and consumes you. Let me tell you something, friend. Whether it's a stone day or a fire day, I am going to wait at the king's gate and wait for God to be there. It doesn't matter what the circumstance or situation is. I'm going to be faithful in prayer. And so the Bible says <coughs> that it's the fervent, it's the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man that God hears. Amen. Now I want to tell you this as well. That I think it's blasphemous both ways. To say that the child of God will always live with rainbows and horses, ponies, whatever. But I also think it's blasphemy to say they live in lament and sadness their whole life. Without purpose. Without any direction. That's not the will of God. And if that's you here today, let me tell you something. God does have a purpose for you. 
especially for men. I, I, I've struggled with a lot. I said, God, what is my purpose? Because me personally, I've got to have something to do. I've got to have a task. And that's, a, that's, that's part of being a man and being a male. You've got to have a task. You've got to have a goal, something to accomplish. And if that's you today, where you don't have that purpose, let me tell you, God wants to give you purpose. And there's two purposes I want to talk about for just a second. And that is loving God and loving your brother or sister. And, the, and those two commandments hang all of the law and prophets. Everything hangs on those two. Loving God, you can find much purpose. Loving your brother, there's even, <laughs> you have a lot of stuff to do with your brother because there's seven billion of them. There's seven billion of them out there. And you say that you don't have purpose? Hello? God wants you to love your brother. And there's different ways to do so. There's different ministries to interact in. There's different things to do. There's people to preach to. We sit here and, and hear a lot and we wait and say, God, what is my purpose, my calling? And I've been there before like, God, I just, I don't know. But then I look around me and I see brothers that might be struggling. I see people who need Bible studies. I see people that I work with that if someone doesn't preach to, where are they going to go, Lanny? Where are they going to go, Jake? Where are they going to go, Levi? Where are they going to go? Where are they going to go, Bruce? Where are they going to go unless they have a preacher? Someone to teach them the ways of God. Someone to pray for them. Someone to reach them. Our God is a merciful God. And I pray that God would use me and others to, 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 to show them mercy and to say, you don't have to stay in sin. But you can pray to our God who's in heaven. Hallowed it be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And, they will fi- and God will fill them with the Holy Ghost. But we've got to be the ones to reach out to them. They can't always come to us. We can't always wait for them to come to us. We can't always wait for that. We've got to go to them. Well, you say, I'm not really good at initiating. I- I'm an introvert. Yeah, whatever. That isn't excusing you from loving your brother. Hello? I got anybody who agrees with me today. Anybody who agrees that, that if I love my brother, I'm going to see some results. I'm going to see some things come in my life and God's going to meet me. God's going to meet me with grace. God's going to meet them with mercy. God's going to fill them with the Holy Ghost if I will love my brother. Amen. Amen. I believe that wholeheartedly. And I might not have many amens out there, but I've got an amen in heaven that we've got to reach this world. We've got to reach it. Because we can come church service, church service to church service. But where are the lost souls at? They're out there. They're out there. Amen. I'll move on. My friend Ethan Ferris just got installed as um, the pastor in advance this last Friday. And it was such a wonderful service and that God's really anointed him. And really, really, he, he, he's meant to fulfill that position, I believe, in the name of the Lord. But as Brother uh, John Clarity was preaching, I was like, man, all of Advance needs to hear this. This message about obedience to the heavenly vision. I, I believe that all of Dexter needs to hear this. Come on, somebody. Everybody needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, everybody needs to hear it. Everybody needs to hear it. I want to be an instrument. Amen. I'm going to move on. The next thing we find in the scripture is that the Bible says that he prayed earnestly. That Elijah prayed earnestly. 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1 tells us, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be the dew, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. And then later we see in 1 Kings 18, 41 through 45, then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of an abundance of rain. 
So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And so when he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. Elijah said, I want you to go back seven times. And then it came to pass on the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot. Go down before the rain stops you. And now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. There was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. I'm telling you, friend, there's nothing like earnest prayer. There's nothing like somebody who is just committed and and, and somebody who's just going to stay in the presence of God and somebody who's not going to stop until the mission of God is complete. There's nothing like earnest prayer. And I pray today that you can earnestly pray. I pray today that every day of your life, I pray over you. That, that there would be earnest prayer. That there would be a lifestyle of prayer and thanksgiving and supplication to God. And, and, and supplication for all men. God uses people who pray. Elijah was a fearless former. He rebuked kings. He was mighty in prayer. He, he was not infallible in judgment and he was divinely honored. He ceased the rain and brought a drought. The ravens fed him. Flour and oil never run out. Elijah revives the widow's son. Elijah prays for fire and it comes down from heaven. Elijah releases rain from heaven and ends the drought. Elijah outruns Ahab. God's food and drink strengthens Elijah. Somewhere, um, and, and Elijah releases fire that consumes the, the first captain and his men. And the same thing happens to the second captain and his men. Elijah divides the water in the river. And Elijah is taken up in the whirlwind. Let me tell you, an earnest prayer and a lifestyle of the prayer is always accompanied by miracles and transformation and the Lord moving in your life. Whenever a man earnestly prays, whenever there is a lifestyle of prayer, whenever there is consecration and holiness in his life, there is always miracle signs and wonders following. But if there is a lack of prayer, but if there is a lack of prayer, if there is prayerlessness, let me tell you something, friend, you are not making God available in your life. Amen. Oh, God. I remember when I first got, when I first was saved, months, months after, we, I stopped going to church and then I came back after youth convention. I remember those moments and I still have them and it's so precious with God but when I would come home from school and, and the Lord would convict me about certain things that I did I didn't even that much read in the word of God but prayer changes things it changes the spirit of a man it changes the, the, the healing of a man but I remember those precious moments Let me, uh, those precious moments when I would get home from school I, I'd, I'd eat something real quick or maybe I didn't and I'd go to my room I'd close the door, I'd lock the door, and I would just sit there in the presence of God. I didn't have many things to say, and you don't have to have many things to say, but just be there. Be there. Be there. Open up the door, and God will come through. And remember, it'd be, it'd be hours. I don't mean to be boastful because this is nothing of, of my own will or way, because I, I know that It's godly sorrow that leads to repentance and it's God who draws, not us or anything that we do. I understand that. But those moments, let me tell you something. If you want God to move in your life and change in your life, you you need to find that time of prayer. Not just in the morning, but be like Daniel and open up those windows in the day and find different times in the day to pray because we need it. You don't realize how, how fastly the day will decline and the day will downhill and it will be a snowball effect going down and down and down if we don't open up windows to pray. There's got to be an open door for prayer in our lives. There has to be. And, and if you don't allow that, the Bible says, well, the Bible, the Bible says that the righteous man who prays earnestly, his prayer avails. I believe when you don't do that, your prayer doesn't avail. Now what does avail mean? It doesn't mean prevail. Because we know that prevail means to, you know, go above and beyond. He prevailed. Prevail means to, to have influence, to, to, to go far, to prevail. But that's not what the scripture says about prayer. The scripture says that the prayer availed. And what does that mean? To, to, to avail means to make available. 
avail, available. And that when a man prays, he is making God in his life available. Available to the things of God. Now, yes, and, and prevailing means to have the most influence. And Elijah did have influence. However, that is not what's meant by the scripture. It means to avail. To avail means to make the power of God available in your life. When a man or woman of God prays, they are not just going through a ritual. They are just not re- repeating a, a, a Catholic liturgy or some sort of religious thing. They are not just doing vain repetition, a man of God. Elijah wasn't just doing vain repetitions as the heathen do. And I want to tell you this, even speaking in tongues can be vain repetition. It can be. They are opening the door, someone whose prayer avails, they are opening the door for, to, for dominion to be in their lives. It makes much things available to the child of God. Do you know that God has things that we don't have? Do you know that God is things that we aren't? Do you know that God is, was, and will always be things that we might not ever be? Do you know that God has certain things that we can have? And if we will pray, and we will do so righteously, and if we will do so earnestly, the Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man the fervent effectual prayer will avail. That means that it will make available healing. Hello. Hello. Somebody. He has healing. Whenever you open up that prayer, he has healing. He has dominion. He has authority. He has power. He has peace. He has joy. And I rebuke every doubt and every whisper that Satan is trying to whisper into your mind to drudge up the old statistics that prayer doesn't work. Oh, prayer works. Every day of my life, prayer works. I just want to come and encourage you. It's my assignment today that prayer still works. (laughs) Oh, I wish somebody agreed with me. All these beautiful families. Does prayer still work? The youth group, does prayer still work? Oh, hallelujah. It still works. It still works. Come on, somebody. Have you ever been there? Have you ever ran to an altar? Have you ever prayed, Brother Bruce? And you lifted up your hands and the Lord delivered you? You ever been there? I've been there. I've been there many times. And I'm going to keep going there many times and I remember in the prayer meetings we used to have I'd go find me a secret place and then someone would come lay hands on me someone who had a lifetime of prayer circling around them does anybody remember Sister Nix I know she'd be shouting right now I know she would be I know she'd be saying hallelujah because she knows the power of prayer and I like that I clap about it but what about you what about you because this is not just about the past. Or, man, we, we miss Sister Nix. We miss her. We wish, we wish we had her. She was the foundation of the church. But what about the foundations now? We've got to move forward from the past. You know one thing that was really, I'm just being open and honest and present to the church. One thing that I really struggled with when I got in the church is whenever we had Brother Winslow. You remember that? Anybody remember that, Brother Winslow? And everybody's like, oh, yes. But I remember seeing how the church acted on a Sunday when Brother Winslow was here. And then a month later when pastor's preaching just as passionately and just from the word of God and there's not a response. Well, it seems like we're, we're praying and we're doing things to be rewarded by men, not by God. Why don't you lift up your hands for just a moment? Lord, forgive us. Come on, everybody. Lift up your hands for just a moment. Lord, I know you want to change us and transform us. 
Lord, I know you want to do greater things. Lord, it's already been spoken. But we're not doing things to be rewarded publicly or to be rewarded by some man or a prophet. Lord, we love Brother Winslow. Lord, we love those prophets who come to our church and speak into our lives. But God, I know you can speak. I know you can speak in the secret place. I know that to be true. Amen. You can continue. I know that to be true. I know that to be true, my friends. I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep... Something's got to break today. Something's got to break today. Some, some, some thoughts we have that we're not going to pray, that we're going to act differently in different Sunday services, that if the beat's right, hello, that if Greater Things, the song we sing, had a, had a faster beat, we would have worshipped more. <laughs> That's hypocrisy, friends. That's hypocrisy. Because the Lord, He's in the silence just as much as He's in the loud blast of life. Hallelujah. (laughs) He's still there. And I know to be true that I've had better moves of God than the service of Brother Winslow. And it's the will of God that you would have better ones too. And let me, let me talk for a second. Because your own personal prayer life, your own devoted time, your, the own, that, that time you have with God is always more precious than the, sometimes the time you have with others. And I don't mean, I'm, not, I'm not casting out coming and worshiping in the congregation. I believe that we are gathered together, that we sit in heavenly places. I believe that. But let me tell you something, friend. If there's a lack of personal discipleship, why do we come congregationally anyways? I come to challenge you today. Something has to break. Something has to change. And I do this out of grace. I don't mean this in any way. And it's really hard for me to talk about this sometimes because I'm so young in the church. It's hard for me to come come up here and and say some things that I say. But let me tell you something, friend. Prayer cannot change in our lives. Prayer has to be stable. Prayer has to continue. Discipleship has to continue. It's been said that you never step in the same river twice. It ought to be said about this church. You never step in the same church twice. What do you mean by that? I don't mean that we're, we're being hypocrites and we're changing all about our character. I'm saying that we're continuing. Like pastor has taken this church from the beginning that we're moving forward. That we're moving on. We're moving on from Brother Winslow. I don't mean that to cast him out, but we're moving on from those services. And we're going forward. Backsliding is when, when you're in a place and, you, and you've, you're back from which you started. You're not there anymore. You've slid back. I want to ask you, two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, have you moved forward? Have you took a step forward? How's your prayer life changed? If I were to ask you around this church, how's your prayer life changed? How has spiritual disciplines changed in your life and, and grown? I wonder that here today. Amen. I'm about to finish up. But lastly, the Bible says that the heavens did not give rain. And then he prayed again, and then they did give rain. The prayers, I want this to encourage you, the prayers of the saints and the prayers of the Most High have the ability to change all of creation. It has the ability to stop the rain, it has that ability. I remember one time um, I, I went to preview at Urshan and we were, we were driving home, Sister Wallace, if you remember this, and we all had to use the restroom very badly, <laughs> very badly. And, 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 and I remember Sister Wells praying and she said, Lord, please stop the rain for just a little bit that we may go use the restroom and so we don't feel that stress. And you know what happened? The rain stopped. The rain stopped. The prayer of the upright is His delight. He is willing to change whatever needs to be changed for His children. 
Moses and the children of Israel being chased by Pharaoh and then the Egyptians faced the Red Sea without any answers. The Bible said in Exodus 14, 13, and Moses said to the people, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will accomplish for you today. And the Egyptians whom you see today, you will see no more again forever. The water was changed. The air was changed with Elijah. The rain was changed with Elijah. And then you have the sons of Korah where the earth opened up and consumed the disobedient. All of creation can change at the name of Jesus. And when the saints pray, and if He can change creation, He can change hearts. Don't you know that some vessels were made for honor and some for dishonor? And how can the, how, how can the clay say to the potter, who are you to form me? He can change whatever He wants to change if the saints will pray. If the saints will pray, 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 if the congregants will pray, if they won't be distracted by anything else and they will pray. Let me tell you, I've got off, I've got off of social media. I'm off of it. And there's nothing more freeing than not being bound by that daily. Oh, if the saints will pray, you can stand. And these altars are always open. But if the saints will pray, come on somebody, do some self-reflection. I ask you to do some self-reflection. Look over your life. Look over this last year. Look over 2022. As it's about to come to a close. Have you changed in your life? Has God moved on you? Has God changed your heart? Do some reflection. Look over your life. And say, Lord, I've been here in church for 15 years, 20 years, 25, 50 years. And God, I stayed stagnant for 20 of them. God, I'm not willing to just stay here and just go to church and do the same thing. Oh, but God, I'm willing to move and to do whatever you want me to do. Come on, if that's you, if you know you need to do some changing in your life, if, if you know that there's some things in me that I've just got to get out, there's some bitterness in me that I just got to get out. There's some things that are hindering me from growing, that are hindering me from doing certain things. Come on, somebody. Oh, come on. Lord, shape my heart. Shape my thoughts, God. Shape everything about me, Lord. I don't want to stay the same. I want to move forward. And Lord, I'm not worried about those other people around me that are are just going through the same motions and the same waves. But Lord, I'm looking to you. I'm looking to you. (laughs) Oh, come on. Even the elders. God's not finished with you yet. God's not finished with you yet. God is still working. He's still moving. Just because you graduate high school doesn't mean you're an adult. And it doesn't mean you're done. Just because you graduate college doesn't mean you're done. Just because you get a steady job, a house, kids, doesn't mean you're done. God is still changing. God still has some things He wants to do. And we can't grow a deaf ear to it. Pray your blessings in this service, Lord. God, change the hearts, Lord. Change our minds, Lord. You come to transform our mind. Oh, Lord, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and thanksgiving and supplication. Lord, you said that if we pray instead of being anxious, you will give us peace of mind through Christ Jesus. The peace of God will guard your mind through prayer. I didn't come to condemn you for a lack of a prayer life, but I came to encourage you to pray and to grow in discipleship. Prayerlessness is not a, it's not as much a power issue. It's not because you don't have power sometimes. Sometimes you're, you don't pray because you don't know yourself. You don't know your importance. You don't know your identity. That's my why maybe you don't pray. And you think it's so terrible to pray and you're not encouraged in prayer. You don't feel the presence of God in prayer. It's, it, may, it might not be just because you don't have power. Let me tell you, you have power. But it might be just because you don't know your identity in Christ. 
If you knew that Elijah was a man of like passions, you would pray as Elijah did. You would pray as for your family as Elijah prayed for the rain. Let the sound of light to blaze If that's the measure you must take To crush the idols Jerk the pews and all the decorations too Until the congregation few And have revival Tell your friends that this is where the party ends Till they're broken in their sins And can't be social and seek the Lord and tell the gods and make them poor and call the Lord and just be hopeful. Sing all you want to, yes you can. Sing all you want to. And sing all you want to. And still get it wrong. His worship is more than a song. Hear the stage and let the sound and lights ablaze. If that's the measure you must take to crush the idols. Jerk the pews and all the decorations too. Until the congregations few and have revival. Tell your friends that this is where the party ends Until they're broken in their sins and can't be social And seek the Lord and wait for what He has in store you Know the great and His reward and just be hopeful Sing all you want to, yes you can is more than a song Take a break from all the plans that you have made and just sit at home alone until you hear God's whisper Beg and please to open up his mouth and speak and pray for real on your knees until they blister Shine a light in every corner of your life Until the pride and lust and lies are in the open So read the word and test and all you haven't heard Until your heart and seer and soul and rocked and broken And sing all you want to Yes you can Sing all you want to Yes, you can sing all you want to and still get it wrong Cause worship is more than a song Take a break from all the plans that you have made And sit at home alone and wait for God to whisper and please to open up his mouth and speak and pray for real on your knees until they blister. Shine a light in every corner of your life until the pride and lust and lies are in the open. So read the word and put a test to all you've heard until your heart and soul and soul and rocked and broken. you can sing all you want to sing all you want to and still get 
get it wrong Cause worship is more than a song Hear the sage and let the sound of heaven blaze If that's the measure you must take to crush the idol. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Wade. I don't believe anybody here would try and discount the fact that we believe that prayer is powerful and that prayer is effective. Amen. That by no means is a not to be debated. But I think, too, that all of us will agree that, amen, sometimes, whatever the reason, and we all have reasons or excuses, but prayer that is not practiced is, is not effective prayer. Amen. There is something that we, we have that, that's a free will. God gives us that, that free will. And amen, I've often thought, you know, the one tree that man was not allowed to partake of, Lord, why didn't you put like electrical charge around that thing to keep the people away, right? Amen. But but God allows us to have those the free choice to make our decisions. You know, interesting thing about is once they took of that fruit and their eyes were open and the Bible talks about where God coming in the cool of the day and asked asked Adam, "Where are you?" And uh, Adam Adam the Bible says that that he said, "Well, I I I I'm 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 naked and I am afraid." Amen. That that is not the the result that the serpent described to Eve that that's what would happen. Amen. Anytime we allow our free will to just be just that, just completely free, no boundary, no discipline, amen, the result of that's always going to be a condition that we really don't want. One, It's one thing to know, boy, I, I need to pray. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is effective. But it's another thing to put that into practice. Amen. But I, t- I promise you, it, you you're, the, Jesus said your, your flesh is willing or your, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. Amen. God, help us to watch and pray that we enter not into temptation. Let's put it into practice. Amen. Let's be a consistent people when it comes to prayer. Thank you. Amen. Brother Wade, for that reminder. Amen. The importance. Amen. Of prayer. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We appreciate the Lord, His goodness. We thank you. For, appreciate the word of the Lord here today. Amen. We've got a couple of birthdays. Lindsey Burns' birthday was this week. Sister Tracy Cole had a birthday this week. Uh, Sister Elaine's birthday is this week. Amen. Praise God. Can we sing happy birthday to these here today? Happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near. Every day of the year, a happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, and the best one you've ever had. Amen, amen. Praise God. Appreciate each of them. Amen. Praise God. This morning, Sister Dorothy. She had a phone call. Okay. Uh, Light in the Night is a week from tomorrow. So, again, we need candy we need candy continue bringing that in that'll be a week from tomorrow is light in the night and uh amen we will be giving out more information next weekend everything getting together so we're excited about that also next saturday is our men's fellowship we're going to be leaving the church here at eight o'clock we're going to be going in the morning. We're going to uh, uh, the Piedmont area, Brother Little's' place, and we're going to be shooting skeet. So uh, I bet I think there was two that came to me uh, Wednesday night. If there's anyone else that you're planning on going, please let me know. And uh, amen, so we can get everything organized so that we can be ready to go Saturday morning. It's going to we're going to have a great time. Have a great time of fellowship. Amen. This Wednesday night's youth service. Amen. We're excited about that, and we're going to be worshiping with our young people. People. Amen. This Wednesday night, uh, youth service. Amen. 
a week from this coming Saturday, two weeks from yesterday, is our fall, uh, our fall fest, church fall fest on the 5th. We'll be here at the church. We're going to have a great time of fun, fellowship, and food. And uh, just a reminder on, on that is our cold plunge challenge. Every $100 equals 30 uh, seconds that Brother Halls and I will be in the ice cold water. Amen. Let's stand here today. Praise God. Lord, we love you. We thank you this morning, God, for your, your presence. Thank you for your word. I pray today, God, as you will bless every home and every family. We give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You dismiss in the wonderful name of the Lord.